Good afternoon, people watching the 65 Lisa Voice. I'm going to give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried and rose again on the third day according to scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone. Not of ourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. It's simple as that. It's not a 12-step 12, uh, 12 program. <laughs> It's not a 12-step program. It's not a PDF file. It's not none of that. It's not a whole paragraph on salvation. It's simply believing in what Christ did at the cross for you. You can't do this. No one can save themselves. People used to say, and it got on my nerves so bad, God helps those who help themselves. Let me explain something to you. That is not biblical, nor is it scriptural? I mean, it's not even it's not even remotely true. If we could help ourselves, Christ wouldn't have had to die on the cross for our sins. I hate that. I always hated that when people said that because they have no clue what the heck they're talking about. It is grace through faith in Christ alone. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, you and I are whosoever, believe in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Once the Lord takes the scales off your eyes, once the Holy Spirit opens your eyes, you can see this. It is by believing. It is no, yeah, you believe, but. It is no, yeah, you believe, and. It is nothing like that. It is grace through faith in Christ, period. Alone, period. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your faith and trust in Christ Jesus, the moment you accept him as Savior, not only are you saved, but you are justified by the blood of Jesus. You are rapture ready and you are sealed until the day of redemption, which means you will not and cannot Lose your salvation. Once saved, always saved. Period. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you. The Holy Spirit will lead you. Oh, and that's another thing. Let's talk about baptism. I done bought this up several times before. We're not talking water baptism because it is not a requirement for salvation. It is not a requirement for salvation. You are automatically Holy Spirit baptized the moment you accept Christ as Savior. I am so sick of people complicating the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm really aggravated with people like that. Please don't complicate it. Don't make it hard. If you don't believe, you don't believe. But please don't make it hard for other people because all you're doing is causing confusion. And we all know who the author of confusion is. It is not God. It is Satan. God gave life and he gives it abundantly. The moment you accept Christ as Savior, you are saved, rapture ready, and sealed until the day of redemption. Again, you will not and cannot lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit automatically will indwell in you. The Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you. The Holy Spirit will speak to you. If you listen, the Holy Spirit will change you. The Holy Spirit is your best friend. It doesn't get any simpler than that. But people want to constantly complicate things by adding to the gospel. Folks, you can't add to the gospel. You can't take away from it. It is grace in Christ alone. Through faith in Christ 
alone, no matter what we see that's going on right now, it is grace through Christ in Christ alone. Allentown, Pennsylvania. Allentown. Big sign up on Allentown Freeway. Allentown Plaza, no diesel. This is going to be a bleak holiday if we're still here. Hopefully we won't be. It's going to be a bleak holiday for a lot of people, unfortunately. Um, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I really could care less at this uh, midterm. I don't because my faith and trust is in Christ. That's all I can do. I... I go to the store and do what I can for my family and for me, and that's all I can do. Um, we just have to trust God about this. These few these uh, diesel shortages are spreading. Hal Turner said he got this from a reader, and they posted he posted it on the website, and it does read in a flashing sign in Allentown, PA. Allentown Plaza, no diesel. So yesterday I reported North Carolina, Oklahoma, and limits on purchases in Tennessee. Now it's Allentown, and God only knows who else is going to get it. In the meantime, these two stories go hand in hand. So I guess the U.S. has decided to give the Kremlin a warning. This is off of Zero Hedge. U.S. nuclear apocalypse submarine enters Mediterranean Sea. So multiple reports show the world's largest nuclear sub, the USS Rhode Island, left the port of Gibraltar on uh, Spain's south coast last week and was last seen entering the Mediterranean. So British newspaper Daily Express said the uh, nuclear submarine is reportedly heading towards the Black Sea. The Italian newspaper um, said USS Rhode Island, which arrived in Gibraltar on November 1st, entered the Mediterranean Sea Friday, this past Friday. The Ohio-class nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarine can carry 24 Trident II missiles capable of hitting targets 18,000 kilometers away. So I guess uh, this is a warning to Moscow from the U.S. Earlier this week, Captain John Craddock Commander of the U.S. Uh, Navy's Task Force 69 said, Rhode Island's port visit to Gibraltar reinforces our ironclad commitment to our allies and partners in the region. The U.S. and U.K. share a strong history of cooperation through exercises, operations, and, co and cooperation activities such as this that enhance our combined capabilities and partnership. The complexity... Uh, lethality and tactical expertise of Rhode Island um, epitomizes the effectiveness and strength of the submarine force. The USS Rhode Island's arrival in the Mediterranean Sea comes after Russian submarines uh, launched a uh, ballistic missile from the White Sea as part of a training exercise. So Ohio-class subs can patrol continuously as a highly effective tool for the NATO nuclear deterrence force and could be headed to a strategic position near the Black Sea. Now, in the meantime, this came out today. So did this article. The White House just held a secret talk with Putin's aid to avert U.S.-Russian war. 
But in the same token, they're sending a submarine to the Black Sea that carries a nuclear warhead. So the White House has reportedly held secrets, uh, secreted behind the scenes dialogue with the Kremlin related to the war in Ukraine, the Wall Street Journal revealed yesterday, citing unnamed U.S. and allied officials. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan spearheaded the uh, secret talks with high-level Russian officials in recent months, Rep uh, reportedly with the aim of reducing the risk of two nuclear-armed superpowers stumbling into a direct border conflict. The official said that the U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan has been in contact with Yuri uh, Yushikov, a foreign minister to Putin. Mr. Sullivan has also has spoken with his direct counterpart in Russian government, Nikolai Petrushev, the officials added. So the aim has been to guard against the risk of escalation and keep communication channels open and not to discuss a settlement not to discuss a settlement of the war in Ukraine, officials said. Talks between Sullivan and top Russian officials haven't been disclosed on a public level since March. In response to the Wall Street Journal story, the Dopey administration neither confirmed nor denied the claims of a secret contact between the two sides with National Security Councilman's uh, spokeswoman, Adrian Watson, when asked if Sullivan had the conversations replying in a Sunday night statement, people, he said people claim a lot of things. Now, you know what? That was stupid of him. You know what? People are worried about a nuclear strike. And this thing right here is going to say something like that. Just answer the question. It's not difficult. but they make it difficult. Further, the report notes that several U.S. officials said that Mr. Sullivan is known within the administration as pushing for a line of communication with Russia. Now, if that was the previous administration that did that, oh, they'd be all over it. But this one, oh, we can talk to them. Even as other top policymakers feel that talks in the current diplomatic and military environment wouldn't be fruitful. The report doesn't indicate whether the alleged phone calls were positive or led to a lessening of tensions from Washington's perspective, nor is it known precisely when they took place. U.S.-Moscow relations have hit an all-time historic low in the wake of February 24th invasion with Ukraine, with the two nations' top diplomats, Secretary of State Anthony Stinkin Blinken and his Russian counterpart, Sergei Lavrov, having only spoken once, at least one publicly disclosed conversation, which was forced on a potential prisoner swap. Sleepy Joe, in an early October media interview, appeared to shut the door on the possibility of talks with Putin saying at the time, he said, look, I have no intentions on meeting with him. But for example, if he came to me at the G20 and said, I want to talk about the release of uh, Grainer, you know, the prisoner over there, Grainer, then I meet with him. The timing of the Wall Street Journal revelations are interesting. Given the report came the day after the Washington Post said the White House is now privately, privately urging the Ukrainian government to show openness towards the negotiations with Russia. U.S. officials cited that in Saturday's report say the onset of a harsh winter and the fact that Ukraine is already experiencing rolling emergency blackouts due to Russian attacks on the energy grid is likely to make Zelensky amenable to ceasefire talks. U.S. officials believe that Kiev is attempting to lock 
in as many military gains as it can before winter sets in, when there might be a window of diplomacy. But from Russia's perspective, the, un uh, the unprecedented inflows of U.S. and Western arms to Ukrainian forces, including increasingly advanced and longer-range missile systems, has also served to make diplomacy nearly impossible. while increasing the risk of direct confrontation with NATO. There is no hope of a ceasefire. I'm going to link both of these articles in the description box. Folks, I'm going to be honest with you. It's time to get saved, for real. Because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. But we know where our hope lies. It's in Christ. And that's where it should be. This is all going to fall apart. It's all falling apart now. The question is, where are you going to be when it does fall apart? Are you going to be on the side of Christ or are you going to be on the side of man? Because if you're on the side of man, you're going to die. But if you're on the side of Christ, you're going to live. Oh, you're going to live forever. The question is whether you're going to live eternity in heaven or hell? That question only you can answer. That's between you and God. I can only give you the truth. I can't make you take Christ as your Savior, and I'm not going to force Christ on you. I can only give you the truth about the gospel. And despite of what you've been hearing out there from other videos and from other venues, the truth is this. You believe on the finished work of Christ. His death, burial, and resurrection for all of your sins. Not only your present sins, not only your past sins, not only your futures, all sins. When you put your faith and trust in Christ and Him alone, you're saved. And that's the only way to get saved. Two boys came to the door yesterday. And I was hoping they were Jehovah's Witnesses. I really was hoping for them. But they were Baptists. They were giving me their brochure about their new church building. And he wanted to witness to me. And I said, are you saved? He said, oh yeah, I'm 100% know that I'm going, I'm, I'm saved. I'm like, okay. I hope. I pray for people to come to my door and knock on my door and ask me that because I like to talk to them because some of them don't really know the true gospel. I hope you don't think knocking on everybody's door and giving them a brochure is going to get him into heaven. I will be back later with more, I'm sure, before the big day tomorrow. We'll see what happens. But in the meantime, have a nice afternoon. Thank you.